I recently did an unboxing for the Lenovo Z6 Pro, and most of you guys commented querying the camera. I must say, I'm really impressed with the camera quality that I've seen thus far, and though I've played around with the phone, I haven't really been able to do too much with it, but I was able to go around Beijing yesterday and do some serious tests with regards to the camera. I even managed to run around to test out that Hyper video, which I'm really excited to share with you guys. Guys, this is the Lenovo Z6 Pro camera review, and I'm really amped to get this going. I'm Technic, and without further ado, let's go. Before we get going, I just want to talk about the different sensors that we have here. So the main sensor is a 48 megapixel Samsung GM1 sensor with an aperture of f1.8. This is the main sensor, it is not the Sony IMX. 586 sensor that the Xiaomi Mi 9 has which is a great sensor but it should still do the trick. Then we have a 16 megapixel ultra wide or macro sensor with an aperture of f2.2. This can take those seriously wide shots and also those ridiculously close up shots. Then thirdly we have an 8 megapixel telephoto or depth sensor lens with an aperture of f2.4 for those zoomed in shots which is two times optical zoom and the depth sensor which aids in portrait effects. Then lastly, we have a 2 megapixel dedicated video camera. This is hyper video as Lenovo call it, and it is also paired as a 3D TOF lens for even better portrait modes. This has an aperture of f1.8. In the front we have a 32 megapixel selfie cam with an aperture of f2.0 which has a few little restrictions in the video department but takes some really good quality pictures. Before we get going here, I just want to show you guys a little bit of the camera UI. So we do have aspect, aspect ratios of full screen, 16x9 and 4x3 as well. In the settings menu, we have location, camera sound, watermark, reference, 48 megapixel super mode and super sharp mode, which I have enabled as default here for all of the snaps. We obviously have timers, flash, HDR, different filters, and so on and so forth. And you hit this little box at the bottom, you get pro mode, you have night mode, which doesn't actually take any time to take. You have portrait mode, you also have panoramic view, you have ultra wide view, which is really cool, of course, and then you have super macro mode, which get lit, allows you to get super close to your subject as well. Obviously, when we come to zooming in here, we have optical zoom of two times and a max zoom of eight times on digital zoom. Flipping over to the front, we have a 32 megapixel selfie cam, and there aren't too many options that you can take those wonderful portrait modes as well. In the back video quality that we have over here is limited to 4K video and 1080p video both at 30 frames per second. We do have hyper video which is really cool and we also have this wonderful thing called ultra wide recording which can be recorded at 4K. The hyper video can unfortunately only be recorded at 720p though it is ridiculously stable I'm really excited to show you guys that one. Otherwise, we have macro video mode. I'm not sure why you would want to use that, but it is there if you would like to use it and you can do it at 4K. And then we also have night mode, which you can also record in 4K, which is great too. Then we also have slow motion mode, but unfortunately you can't take it at 4K, though you can do time lapse at 4K, which is pretty cool. Once you flick over to 1080p, you then have the options for slow mo, but the max that you get is 120 FPS. And even when you go down to 720p, it's still limited to 120 FPS as well. When you move over to the front camera, you're limited to 1080p and 720p recording at 30fps. Guys, this camera UI is really neat and Lenovo have come a far away from their predecessors and I'm really excited to show you guys the results. So here is just a couple of the main photos using the main GM1 sensor over here and they come out really great in color in really good lighting conditions. Sometimes they can't really handle light too well but it does do quite a good job especially with scenery. I see that sometimes when using the ultra wide sensor because it knocks to that 16 megapixel mode it kind of loses quite a bit of detail and it loses a lot of color. Nevertheless it's still does a pretty good job when you don't have the sun directly hitting you such as when I took a picture here at the bell tower in Beijing. Taking a picture of a temple over here you could see how well the ultra wide sensor actually takes a picture and even at these flowers over here it does an incredible job when zooming out though you can see the color loss over there. Then with the main sensor when you do super macro mode when you get too close you don't get it but look how incredible that flower looks with super macro mode enabled. With ultra wide sensor you can see there then one times zoom over here guys and then going into telephoto lens with that 8 megapixel optical zoom does a great job but as soon as we hit it over to five times and eight times digital zoom you can see that quality just gets thrown straight out the back door and when in harsh lighting conditions such as this the two times optical zoom doesn't really do a great job because of the sun rays and but the digital zoom does do a pretty decent job as soon as you hit that eight times digital zoom the max 
it's not the furthest and it's definitely not the greatest. But that two times optical zoom really does keep things looking fresh. Now when it comes to portrait modes, it does flick over to use that depth sensor which is part of the telephoto lens and it does a superb job of using the top sensor as well as blurring the background and really keeping the subject there well. As you can see over here with my wife at the bell tower, it does a really great job of keeping her present but it does still keep some other stuff in the background highlighted. You can see some outdoor scenery as well here and I got some really excellent shots with this wonderful depth sensor that this camera has. Going over to indoor, taking some pictures of food, nothing is zoomed in here, just the main sensor and you can really see the detail. Now other thing that I want to talk to you guys about is indoor night mode works brilliantly with indoor situations guys. You can see over here that not only does it brighten shots up a lot, it captures a lot of details. Though sometimes it comes out a little bit muddy, it almost tries to pick up a little bit too much detail. But in situations like this in this restaurant, it really balances the light out really well and you can see so much more in the shot. And you can really admire what you're actually embracing in those freaky shots that you get in these strange restaurants that we do get over here in Beijing. So moving over to like a shot like this where it's starting to get a bit darker, you can see how much more detail and how much more light that you actually get in this photo. Now this is inside a little store and you can see a little Chinese guard over here and using that ultra wide sensor indoors also does a pretty terrific job. As soon as you get really low lights indoors with that ultra wide sensor, it still seems to hold up well. Getting too close to a subject can be a bit of a difficulty for the main lens, but using that macro sensor does a terrific job. And as soon as you go into the depth sensor, you can see that it does a terrific job as well. But check over here with these glasses. You can see that the tops have been taken away. And you'll even see with this bear over here that the colors just get washed out when there's sun coming through a window. With this bear over here, the shot looks great in portrait mode. And even over here, it's just that light in the background tends to hit it a bit. If you look at the slow boat beer mug over here, you can see that the top of the glass gets rubbed into the background. But nevertheless, it takes a pretty good portrait shot. Going over to night mode, I kind of got just before dark over here and it was really cool. We went around on the scooter and everything looked pretty great. You can see that with night mode, it captures so much more detail. Sometimes it doesn't even just brighten up the shots, but it actually captures details and keeps the shot the same brightness. I would rather have the detail over the full brightness, but sometimes you can't really control it. As you can see with this building over here, there's so much light that you get extra from that night mode being turned on. But night mode, unfortunately, does not kill the light noise that you do see in these pictures. Pictures. I was really hoping because many phones do kill that light noise but with the Lenovo Z6 Pro it just seems to continue to stay there though if you look at the bricks such as this photo you'll see so much more detail in the bricks with night mode on though there's still quite a bit of light noise when you're looking at a really dark scene like these leaves over here it captures so much more light but then it just washes out all the colors but it's still so much brighter guys going into ultra wide at night doesn't do a terrible job either it actually maintains a lot of the lights but sometimes Sometimes it blows the shot out terribly, almost as if I was taking a portrait shot. So it didn't really impress me too much. I wouldn't dare you to take ultra wide sense shots outside at night. Maybe it's a bit better inside. I didn't have the luck of doing that. Moving on to the video recording over here. This is a 1080p at 30 FPS. We're limited to 30 FPS across the board here, guys. This is upscaled to 4K. It is a bit jittery, but most phones are. It doesn't look the best, but it is kind of smooth. It's not too sharp. And I actually think it does a pretty good job. With 4K at 30 FPS, this is obviously native since this is a 4K video, and it looks pretty good, but the jitteriness is even more there. You can see with 4K ultra wide, it actually tends to stabilize the video more. Now there is no optical or digital image stabilization within these videos but when it comes to 720p there is but only with the hyper view mode the hyper video with 720p this is a regular one and you'll see the jitteriness will be completely gone after i show you this is me running right now 720p 30 fps you can see the jitteriness now we're going to go over to that hyper video mode i'm literally running the exact same way here guys i cannot tell you how mind blown i was when i saw this now moving on to my scooter ride over here on the way to where we were going Recording at 1080p at 30fps, upscale to 4k again. You can see the jitteriness is there, but I mean there's a ton of wind and at 4k you can see it as well, but it seems to be a little bit more stabilized. Once again, my wife is recording at the back, so I don't really have too much control in this. This actually shows you a proper perspective of what it actually is. Now using hyper video, I know it's 720p guys, I really wish the quality was better, but look at how stable this is. You would never 
say that we're on the back of a scooter with that footage that you just saw. Moving on to the streets over here, we managed to find a really crowded street where we found that restaurant earlier. And it kind of tells a story, this guys. I, I'm really enjoying this footage that we took here. And though you can clearly see that 4K is a lot more jittery, the quality is still out there. And it's really enjoyable to re-watch this back here. But you can see that sometimes it gets dark and light and dark and light. And moving on to slow-mo, unfortunately, we are limited to 120 FPS at 1080p. 1080p or 720p limited to 120 FPS. So it's not too slow low but the quality is pretty good because it is full HD guys and most phones have 120 or 240 so it's not too bad for a phone at this price range. Taking a look at these fish over here they're really cute and it's really awesome and 4k time lapse is a really awesome feature to have. At 16 times fast forward we're hitting it around 480 FPS the other way around and it did a superb job. Then recording with night mode indoors you can see that as soon as we switch it over here to night mode on, you can actually see so much more detail in the red bars on the left over there, as well as the lighting on the wall. It seems to be a little bit more concentrated, which is really great. When it comes to night recording, it does an okay job, guys. With There is a night mode for recording, which most phones don't have. And with night mode off, it is very grainy. It tends to take a little bit of those granules away when you put night mode on, such as this 1080p 30fps with night mode on over here. But it does it does calm down those lights a bit. As you can see here with 4K 30fps with night mode off, you can just see the lights are just bleeding out everywhere you see, guys. And it's not too bad. It is pretty dark here. It is like 8.30 at night when I took this recording, so it does a pretty good job. But as you can see with night mode on in 4K, it just completely blows the shot away and it doesn't necessarily know what it's doing. But going into hyper video, it gets a little interesting. Though it's grainy, it still does such a superb job of keeping this video stable. But look at that light noise, it is insane. This is a really beautiful dome that we captured over here with that government building in the background. Now recording super dark with night mode off at 4K 30fps, you can see with night mode on, it makes the world of difference. You can actually see the green leaves as opposed to just black blur there. Now moving on to the selfie cam, guys, we have a 32 megapixel selfie cam and portrait mode works just as well as it does with the back cam, even though it doesn't have a second camera to pair with it. You can see that the subject is properly in front of you and the back is blurred. Now these are some selfie pics taken at night with no black background blur just to give you guys an idea of what the proper quality is like taking pictures at night. And then we have portrait mode on over here to give you guys an idea of what it is like taking portrait modes at night. There you can see it blurred in the background. This will be another standard shot and right after this you will see it will blur in the background once again and it doesn't do a bad job but it seems to try and blur the background without you even having portrait mode on. Now in 32 megapixel selfie cam mode we're limited it's 1080p at 30fps and it's not too bad when you're recording at night. I must say it's actually a lot better than some of the top phones that I see out there. Hey guys, there. so this is a front facing cam and mic test for the Lenovo Z6 Pro. I'm currently at the Drum and Bowl Towers in Beijing and I hope that you guys are enjoying the sound of this mic. The quality looks pretty good. Just a little cherry on top here. I wanted to compare this with the Sony IMX586 sensor that we have on the Xiaomi as well as their ultra wide shot. So you can see that the colors are a little bit better on the Xiaomi, but they're actually kind of a little bit more saturated. Actually looks a little bit more natural and realistic on the Lenovo, though it does seem to capture a little bit more detail on the Xiaomi. I must say that the Xiaomi doesn't get quite as much detail when it comes to portrait mode as you do get with the Lenovo. Guys, this has been an awesome phone and I really hope that you like this full camera review and stick around for more videos just like this. Until next time guys, this is Technic.